Turn that preamp up. Yo, what's going on, family? Welcome back to uh, just the shore somewhere over here. Uh, I guess we can call it that, man. Just me processing uh, my experience of transitioning out of Christian faith after being a somewhat popular Christian speaker, poet, YouTuber, singer, songwriter, you name it, just personality influencer. Uh, gained attraction, gained a following uh, of a couple of couple hundred thousand on YouTube and, you know, thousands on Instagram, traveling the country and the world, speaking and teaching and singing and making poetry about Jesus. And last year in August, I made an announcement that I was no longer a Christian and I didn't give much context or explanation as to why. And that has been the, the question that people have been asking. Well, why, 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 why? And I've kind of held my cards close to my chest for a while Namely because I was ready to transition out of that space publicly and let, let people know, but I wasn't ready to start having conversation about that publicly. Um, I think that my position at the time, you know, I think I would have been too eager to engage in debates with people or I was kind of on the fence about whether or not I engaged in debate. And I don't, I'm just not interested in that. I just don't want to debate. I don't. I've come to the space where I'm willing to have conversations about faith and, you know, Christian faith and lack of, but I'm just not, I'm not in a space where I feel the need to prove where I'm at. Some people may see that as a cop out, you know, especially people, you know, people in my comment section and stuff sometimes, like, you know, they see it as cowardly. And <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, I remember one time I was in L.A. fitness playing basketball and for whatever petty reason, this dude wanted to fight me. I'm a grown man. I'm, I got a career going on. I make videos and stuff for a living. And this dude wanted to fight. And I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm cool, bro. I'm like, I'm good. I wasn't like there was no fear in me. I wasn't scared. I was like as calm as can be. I was just like, nah, I'm, I'm good. And, you know, some people would see that as a, you know, being scared or cowardly move. It was like, nah, bro, I, I got stuff to do. Like, I got, <laughs> you ain't got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> we, you know, we can get arrested or whatever, or kicked out, lose membership here. I got stuff to do, bro. I just got better things to do than fight. I, he was pretty swole. I'm not going to lie. It was, uh, I, I probably would have lost that fight. But I wasn't scared. I genuinely, I just was like, I got better things to do. And that's kind of how I feel oftentimes with this whole, like, you know, the conversation around Christianity and the Bible, it's like, I'll have the conversation, but if we're, if there's going to be like some like, well, prove to me why you, and if you don't prove to me, then, you know, you're doing yourself and the people listen to you a disservice or you're being cowardly as a cop out. And it's like, I just don't, I don't care. <laughs> I just got, I have better emotional things to, to process than that. Um, so anyways, let's talk about why I left the faith, which is a very, uh, it's a very complicated, but I think I can make it very, very simple uh, instead of going down the rabbit hole. And maybe I'll just take time going down the rabbit hole as I continue to make these videos and as I start up the podcast again. Uh, but let's first talk about why I didn't leave the faith. Because I, there are three main reasons why people have been assuming that I left Christian faith and not just on me. But on many people, I've seen videos on TikTok and YouTube, tweets, all these different posts, uh, not about me specifically, but just in general about people leaving the faith. And there's this need for Christians, many Christians, not all Christians, but many Christians to try to do away with the gray or to try to build some straw man argument up and then tear it down. And this conversation makes other Christians feel good, but it doesn't actually explain real experiences of people who left the Christian faith. And so if you're not actually concerned with why people want to leave the Christian faith, then cool, but don't go and make up reasons why. Uh, and maybe these reasons are true for some people, but for a lot of people, especially for me, it's just not true. One, people assume that you left because of church hurt. Uh, he left because, you know, he felt the pain of people 
uh, I don't know. Some they make up. I don't know. I I don't know where they got that from. Have I had unpleasant experiences in the church? Absolutely. Who has not been offended, been betrayed, been annoyed by people in the church, whether they're just common church goers or church leadership? Everyone has experienced if you've been in the church any length of time, that's just life. People are going to hurt you. And so if you spend most of your life in the church, you're going to have church hurt. Like, and some people's church hurt is more traumatic than others, but everyone has church hurt. So yeah, have I had un unpleasant experiences? Yeah, but it's not the people per se, uh, uh, or the experiences of me, people treating me badly or me having, you know, losing faith in people or whatever. All those things happened. Uh, and I'm sure I have been the cause of someone's church hurt at some point. None of those things. It's not the ultimate reason why I left. Um, the third, the second reason, third, second reason that people throw out is that, you know, oh, he left because he he's got caught up in the whole idea that uh, probably that 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 the Bible is the white man's religion. And I'm going to show the common thread in all three of these reasons that after I give all three of them, which I think is, is very interesting. The second, yeah, the second reason is that people think that I left because of, I, you know, because of the racial divide within the, the cultural wars within the church and within the country. And, and, you know, I just, I don't know, I felt betrayed by white evangelicalism and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I have a lot of problems with white evangelicalism. <laughs> um, but I know how to separate the two. I understand that the Bible, Jesus, Christianity, is not inherently a white man's religion. This is, the fact that I even have to say this as if I'm saying, I'm not saying anything deep or uh, hard to find or some like, oh, wow, he went to seminary to find out that Jesus and Christianity started in the Middle East. And then Europeans got a hold of it and was like, hmm, we could do some real damage with this. No, that's not, that's not why I left. Uh, three, which is, has a spectrum, but people think it's because, and they'll attribute this to a lot of people, they think that I left and many people leave Christianity because they want to go and sin. They just, they just, they couldn't, they couldn't bear the weight of their sin anymore and they want to go out and sin, specifically sexual sin. I don't know why that's like the thing, like everyone is like, yo, they want to go out and have sex, guiltless, shameless sex. Christians, huh. ironically, as as pure as Christians want to be, they Christians can be very hyper focused on sex, um, and so for whatever reason, they're like, "Oh, he's, he just wants to go out and have sex." And, and, and particularly, this is what's kind of thrown me off, which has been wild. It's, I will say this is a minority opinion. This is not a lot of people, but it has popped up, and it's been really interesting. I remember when I first announced that I wasn't a Christian, I went on IG Live, and there were a couple of comments. Um, suggesting like, oh, next thing you know, he's going to come out as gay. And I don't even know why I'm even giving this a voice, but I just saw another comment recently uh, of someone suggesting the same thing. And this is kind of spouted up a few things, you know, a few times here and there. Um, I think at this point, because I don't feel I owe anything to the church uh, and I feel so free in what I am right now where I'm at in my life right now, like, if I was gay, cool. <laughs> uh, two, I would have told y'all a long time ago. Like, it would have been pretty evident. Like, it's not like I'm holding my cards close to my chest. Um, and it's this, like, it's the, it's the weirdest gaslighting cycle that you can get caught up into. Because then if you act surprised by the accusation... They're like, oh, I'm sorry to trigger you. See, uh, he got real defensive about it. It's like, no, it's just annoying that someone would project onto your sexuality 
with literally no evidence. It's just the weirdest thing. But I think, again, it falls under the greater umbrella that Christians oftentimes they want to explain your your exit by saying there's some sort of sin, some sort of scandal, some sexual scandal. They're not used to people just leaving on good terms or just peaceful terms. It's like, oh, it had to be some sort of some sort of uh, struggling, some sexual struggling within himself. Um, and in the worst kind of sexual struggling to Christians, the, the homosexual kind. I, and I don't I don't get it. I, 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 I don't get it. Um, but what all three of these things have in common is that they all sort of belittle the intellectual capacity of people when they leave Christianity. Again, the first reason being a very emotional one. Oh, they left because of church hurt rather than, no, I just, which kind of alludes to the reason why I left very generally. I, I just don't find Christianity intellectually tenable. I, I, it, the cognitive dissonance became too much to try to hold together in my mind uh, to fight away. Uh, it just doesn't it just doesn't hold water to me. Uh, and I won't go into specifics. There's, there's not just one thing that I'm like, oh, I can't get with it. It's many things. And mind you, I have my I have been studying apologetics um, casually at first, but then very, very deeply uh, for you know since like 2000, I think nine, 2010 was the first time I read it. Somewhere around that time, so over 10 years that I've been deeply engaged in apologetics. Um, and, you know, the more questions I had, I sought for answers. And the more answers I got, the more questions I had. And um, it's just, it just doesn't, the, the idea of it just doesn't hold water to me. You know, and, may, and like I said, maybe another video we can, there's so many different areas that we can just have a whole hour long conversation around it. Um, and so my reason for leaving Christianity was very, was very much an emotional one because I mean, I'm an emotional person. We're all emotional beings. And I had a lot of emotions tied up in my Christian experience, um, uh, but very much, uh, an, uh, an intellectual, uh, bout as well. And so I think the thing that I guess was most annoying or offensive about these reasons that people want to project is like, they all dismiss someone's intellectual capacity to be to make a a, a logical and rational decision for themselves. So like, oh, it's because they were they were church hurt. They so they blamed it on Jesus because their pastor had some sort of scandal or whatever. It was like, no, like for the most part, I found myself in churches that had really um, for the most part, everyone's broken, everyone's messed up. I can I can go through complaints about all the pastors that I've had at some point because they're humans. Now, I understand that. Um, but, uh, you know, my childhood pastor, I, 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 you know, he passed away a few years ago. I have so much respect and reverence for him as a, as a human being. Um, he's one of the most influential people in my life. Uh, and it hurt me to the core when he passed away. Um, and I still, uh, look up to him as a hero in my life uh, and a hero for my family. Um, uh, my most two recent, uh, pastors, I'm still in contact with uh, one of them. I, I'm still, you know, really friends with them, you know, and still, I just was talking to one of them this week. Like we still communicate, like I have reverence and respect for them as a human being. Um, so yeah, there's, you know, bad leadership throughout the church globally, nationally, but, uh, there's a lot of really good people in the church and I know how to differentiate, uh, bad people and theology, you know, um, and then for the whole, like, you know, Christianity is the white man's religion and it, it dismisses the uh, the idea, it dismisses the capacity of someone to be like, no, I understand that. I understand how the Bible came to be. I understand how Christianity came to be. Um, I understand it in its cultural context uh, as much as I, you know, tried and learned. I don't think we we'll ever fully understand. But, you know, for the most part, generally understand how Christianity came about culturally uh, and geographically, and I still reject it. I still reject it. There's that. 
Um, and then the last one being like because of some sexual sin. It's like, oh, it's, he has some inner turmoil. And it's like, no, it can't just be because people just don't think it's true. They just don't think it's true. Have that conversation. But it's very, it, it's gaslight someone when they're like, well, I know you say it's an intellectual one, but really it's a, it's a sin issue. And I guess, you know, depending on your theology and your doctrine of sin, you could say that um, anything that's in opposition to the God of the Bible is sin, not just sexual sin, but any. So, so I guess in that sense, I guess you could say, like, it's because I wanted to go sin. I don't know. Um, but I know what people generally mean when they say that. There's like some like, uh, they, you know, we want to go and live. Uh, it, what's, what's interesting about that is that many of the, you know, many of the morals and standards and the way that I see uh, ethics in life uh, and, and particularly sexuality. Maybe I'll make a video about that another day. Um, many of them I've let go of. Chris, I think a lot of it, a lot of uh, doctrine and teaching around sexuality within uh, Christianity is extremely uh, regressive, oppressive, um, arbitrary, um, and perpetuated by patriarchal uh, leadership. You know, um, so. But at the same time, there's good bits of it and sort of uh, concepts and ideas of it that I, I still kind of get with. I'll make a video about it one day. But I, you know, I had to come around to it in a, in a back-end way. Um, but there are still good bits of it that I see as, um, as, a, as a good way to carry yourself. So, uh, it, you know, it kind of comes down to kind of what Paul would say, like, all things are permissible. I sexually, all things are permissible. All things you do what you want to do. You can do what you want to do. Um, but is it beneficial to you? That's the question. Is it actually good for you to do that, even though you are free to do it? So um, that's the irony of it, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, the general reason is you know, existentially and intellectually could not continue without feeling a strong sense of dishonesty within myself about following the Bible. It, um, and for years tried to keep connecting the dots. Uh, but at some point, it's like, there's a thin line between faith and willfully acting in ignorance. It's like, yo, is this faith or are you just choosing to ignore um, what you experience and what you know, and what you what you've learned and how you process things? And, you know, everyone processes differently and y'all are going to come. Some people are going to come to wildly different conclusions than I have. And that's cool. But as for me in my house, I could no longer move in that direction. So that's it. That's, that's pretty much it. I could make this video longer, but I think I'd just be rambling at that point uh, and kind of nitpicking at certain things. But that's the why and why I didn't leave Christianity.